if you were here yesterday and I made a gripe about the shipping about another marker, this is the one the gripe is for. Hey y'all, it's Alex and welcome back to my channel. We are continuing my paint marker journey today with more phony markers. I, I am not quite sure if that's the way the brand is intended to pr be pronounced. It could be more phony. It could be more phone, more one. Um, I'm gonna go with more phony because that is what I originally read it as. Maybe it's probably supposed to be more phone, but that just sounds a little too close to morphine to me. So more phony for me it is. If that is the incorrect pronunciation of the brand, please tell me below. I did reach out to this brand's Instagram and they did not reply to me, so... But this is a marker brand that I feel like is gaining a little bit of traction over on Instagram. I might just be seeing an inflated use amount of them because I saw an advertisement or a sponsored post by someone and I am following their account, so maybe that's just like the bias of social media. I had a little bit of trouble getting my hands on these markers. I decided that I was just going to buy them directly from the shop listed on their Instagram. And when I got the shipping confirmation, I was a little worried that it just said from China to America. Just the fact that there wasn't anything more specific than they're coming from China. Not anywhere specific in China, just China. It's like saying, I live on Earth. Where on Earth do you live? Earth. So I got a little worried that I might be being scammed, but it did give shipping information. It did give updates slowly. It said on the website to give seven to 15 days for it to arrive with like a week after that 15 day window passed, they send me an email saying, hey, we'd love it if you posted a review of these markers on our website. And I had to message them back saying, hey, I haven't got them. What should I do? And they were like, oh, just wait another few more days. I ordered them on January 11th. They didn't show up until February 13th. A little frustrating. I was checking the mailbox religiously, really worried that they'd never show up because that was the last paint marker besides some Amsterdams that still haven't arrived that I was waiting on to be able to film all of my B-roll and that ended up falling through and I didn't end up doing the video like that. When I was originally going to only do it as two videos, one expensive and one cheap. I also got a little bit frustrated when I went on Amazon looking for more Amsterdam markers and I saw multiple listings for a storefront claiming to be more phony or more phone and they were also ten dollars cheaper i also don't really want to support the bezos machine so i would hope that the shipping for these would be a little bit quicker but i didn't pay for expedited so whatever they arrived and guys they're they're <sighs> i'm really excited that for getting to the packaging, but real quick, every one of these markers in the series is being tested on three criteria, the packaging, the swatching, and the drawing, and we will get more into all of the information of that as we go along, but now please, let's get into this packaging because oh my god. Look at how cute this packaging is. I wish this little sleeve was the print that was on the actual box. I think I'm just gonna keep the box as decoration. The box itself for acrylic paired pairs. <laughs> this box does look a little beat up. It has a color set on the side, but the one on the website has names with such icons as fluorescent brown. So I wish they would have included that. There is some discoloration on the box, either from how it was sitting in storage. I have a feeling some of it is glue and the, bar the box was partly ripped here, but honestly, for a cardboard box, it lasted okay. Um, fun fact though, when I originally opened this up, one pen was in here upside down. I could not handle that, so here they are. Right off the bat, I actually really love the shape of these pen caps. They've got kind of like, I'd almost call this a tulip shape. 
and then they're flat on one part and they still have a little nubbin to try to stop them from rolling. It doesn't work, but I'm thankful they made an attempt. This is another pen that has completely metallic text, which I get that some people really like this style of text. I just find it really annoying to photograph because it has to be very particularly like this, but then you can only see more phony and not really read acrylic paint pen very well. They've got really simplistic packaging and again, the one thing that's missing, like it was missing on the box, is color names. There's absolutely no notation of what pink this is. This one is likely pastel pink. This is their entire lineup of blues and greens. I'm going to hazard a bet and say this one is absinthe. This one I would think is turquoise green and this one would be forest green. This probably is pastel blue. Does that, does that make this meadow green? Napoleon blue, cobalt blue? The color names for these make absolutely no sense. And then they label their white as colorless blender, which is absolutely not how that works in acrylic paint pens. I think they're cute markers. I kind of wish that they weren't reflective. It does work better on these darker markers. You can not see all of the ink. There is nothing preventing you from seeing how much ink is left. This is another marker where you can unscrew this bit to get at the nib. The smell of them is instantly apparent. They smell, they smell kind of like whiteboard markers. They're cute. I love the cap. I like how the branding is front and center and they have available on various surfaces pigmented ink when they definitely mean uh, usable, not available. The lack of the color name is really what gets me considering they have a list on their website and that list makes no sense. So I really wanna hear from them what meadow green is when clearly what's swatched there is like a blue. I think in the packaging department, these are going to get a three. Well, they do have a really cute box. Okay, 3.5 for the cute box. For the swatching, we will use these two colors. I have no idea which color names these are. So, um, really gotta work to get the proper color out of these markers. There we go. It lies to you when you first use the marker. Our light color, gotta do the same for the purple, which is kind of a waste. I feel like this is still even a little dark. That's more like it. So the first color you get out of the pen is not the consistent color. These just settle really weirdly. The dots between them, even though they're the same size, are really inconsistent. But the line that they give is nice and juicy, doesn't have a lot of feathering. Here's the layers, and already with just one layer, I feel like it's actually really good. I seem to have missed a teeny tiny little spot here, but we'll get that now. These pens definitely dry to a much darker color. Like, look at that color difference. I have to start hurrying because I'm starting to lose daylight here, but there is a very slight opacity difference in between those two. Overall, not terrible. I wish it dried a little bit closer to its cat color, but oh well. Here's on the gesso, which is just a simulation for a rougher texture. And honestly, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm not really getting any feathering from these. 
Next we have our varnish test to see whether or not these are waterproof slash are you able to brush on a varnish to seal in the end. And it does say, I think, I feel like it said for best use on these that you should varnish them. But at the same time, we will lay down our base coats for the opacity tests. These do have a very slight sheen to them, but especially where it's double layered there. Next, we are moving on to the varnish test. I'm using a high gloss varnish, though I really wish I had a matte varnish. And I've said this in literally every video and people who are following along through the whole series are probably so very tired of it. So going back and forth a few times, to mimic how I usually work with my varnishes and oh my god let's really go in harder than I ever would on a final piece and I think I'm not seeing really any pickup from on my paintbrush it's maybe a tiny tinge but it's not really bleeding at all. Oh my god, we finally found one. Next, we are moving on to our opacity. So we'll take the light color and cover over the dark. Oh my god. Whoa, those actually have really good opacity, at least in comparison to a lot of the others in this series. The dark purple is really good, but as far as a light color goes, that is actually really good opacity. As it's drying, I can see a little bit more underneath, but it's not picking up the color underneath when I'm going over it. Let's actually go over it. Oh my God, I'm shocked. Okay, let's see how they handle the pencil. So these little scribbles are to simulate a sketch. And here's the pink. I see nothing. Okay, maybe a little hint of something over here, but like, I have seen far worse. I might have to take a half a point for how much pencil I am seeing come through. Let's zoom you in. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera, but just one layer, I can see a swoop. And then that leads back up. Two layers would fix that no problem. The point of the test is to see whether or not one layer will do it. Let's see how they handle colored pencils. They feel a little plasticky, so I am concerned about this test. Let's go over the pink with a red. I'm able to get pretty dark and even on a spot where there's a little bit of paper texture coming through I'm not really seeing any difference okay and then I think we're gonna have to use the black colored pencil well here's my black color race pencil this one is digging in more so than blending I'm seeing a lot more lines but I don't think I typically go into a color this dark with a colored pencil over top of it. It looks a little bit more like it's burnishing, but if I had to really, really nitpick, that would be maybe like half of half a point off, but I think these take colored pencil just fine. I can't believe this is as opaque as it is. There's only one thing about these markers that would deserve a point off. And that's the fact that you have to waste paint to go from the color it wants to be right out the gate to the color that it should be. That is going to be a point off. The sheen over here does have me, if I can get it to show on camera, the sheen on the double layer does have me a little concerned. So that will be a half point off. Five, so that's another 3.5 for the swatching. Let's get into the drawing section. 
every one of these brands was randomly paired up with one illustration that was randomly generated. This particular illustration is a dog girl with curly hair, a color blocked sweater, tattoos, and making a hand gesture. And I decided to go for a peace sign over the eye. Now this color palette off to the side is reminiscent of a color palette that I've been using a lot in some of my branding pieces, in particular, this color palette. Based off of the cap color, I thought that this pen would be the right one. However, it ended up drawing a lot darker than I thought. And that's kind of the theme with these markers is there is a completely different color from the wet color to the dry color. And it, it fooled me so many times. I thought it was a trick of the lighting when I was using this piece. In the moment, I considered trying to go for the other yellow, but it really looked like more of a, a lemon yellow. I wish I would have gone for it now, but hindsight is 2020. I feel like I can't say that phrase now. The darkness of the yellow aside, I literally gasped when I opened up this marker set for the first time and saw how light this light teal was because it is a color that I have been looking for for some time. Even if it does dry darker, it still is likely going to be one that appears in my art from time to time now. Unfortunately though, like a few of the other brands in this series, these do have some weird sheen issues. From head on, these look pretty matte. However, when you tilt them slightly to the side, they end up having a little bit of a gloss to them. And that might not be a problem to some, but I really don't like when I can see the light raking across the piece and it shows me all of the texture problems. So either I'm going to have to varnish these in matte with a matte spray, which it's not something that's always feasible for these small pieces on paper. Canvas, yes. If I do use these on canvas, I for sure will be varnishing them in a matte spray. Quick little note, since these did not come with a small point nib, in order to give these a fair fighting chance against all the others and also to actually do the fine details of her tattoos, I had to use Posca pens to be able to do the line work. And despite the yellow color being a little darker than I, I intended, I think it ended up actually working out for the best. I worry that if I would have gone in with the the lemon yellow, then it might be a little bit of an odd con- like, I didn't think it would mesh well with the rest of the colors. I think the most fun part of this line art was the hair. Curly hair is not something I usually draw, and I feel like I need to learn how to draw it better because this is more just like- big poofy wavy hair. I feel like I kind of missed the mark on actually curly. So if you guys have any recommendations for how better to draw curly hair, I would love to hear them down in the comment section. As for the tape peel, these ended up, well, the tape ended up failing and not being the best, but it didn't creep under the tape in any of the sections. But here's the sheen problems I mentioned, which might be a problem to some, but might not be a problem to others. I didn't think going into this that the colors drying darker than they initially appear would bother me so much, but the yellow that I used for the face of the dog is just way too dark for what I originally had my vision of. A little miffed about that, which is going to take off a point, and the slight sheen, especially on that yellow area that almost makes it look metallic on camera. Um, it's gonna be just a half a point off for me on that one. It's not the shiniest it could be. Everything else laid down just as I wanted it to. So that's gonna be another 3.5. <laughs> so this is a 10.5 out of 15. So at a 10.5, that means these markers have tied with Molotow. But between the two pieces and between the two marker experiences, I think the Molotows have been outpaced by the Morphoni markers, meaning 
This is officially the second up in the entire running, only eclipsed by Posca's. So here's our current top three, Posca's, Morphoni Markers, and Molotos. The next set down is Pebeo, Crank, and Arteza. And following up the pack, Liquitex, Montana, and Amsterdam is still the last of the group. If you like the look of any of these art pieces, you want to see the process, you want to see my um, my review of the brand, I have the link to those in my description and linked at the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me while I create this little fiction and while I review these paint markers. The playlist with the rest of the paint marker marathon is linked at the end of this video and I hope you guys come along for the next in the series. And if so, I'll see y'all in the next one.